What's really important about uh, uh, netbooks for Linux is that first, they're devices that people are using very differently. They don't use netbooks to run you know, big spreadsheets or to run yesterday's applications. They use netbooks to serve Facebook. They use netbooks to, to, to be online to Google and to, use, to get access to Wikipedia. So it's a, it's, a, it's a use case that Linux fulfills really well. And, and that's why I think it's really important that we get free, you know, the free software stack very usable in, in the netbook case. So a lot of work in Ubuntu um, to make Ubuntu on netbooks work well. Yeah, there was some concern that that Linux-based netbooks have a higher return rate, and we now work with a number of different OEM partners. We work with Dell, we work with uh, Toshiba, we work with a, a variety of different companies, and the statistics that we're seeing now vary quite a lot from company to company. What we now think is that a lot of it has to do with how the how people buy the devices and what's mentally in their minds when they buy the device. Often they'll go into a store and they'll see a machine with Windows running. And then they'll see the boxes and they'll take a box and take the box home. And the machine in the box that they picked has Linux on it. So when they turn it on, it's different to what they saw in the store. Whereas, you know, in, in, in other cases, people have been told this is, this is a web-oriented machine. It, it has all of the advantages of not having Windows. You know, it's much more resistant to viruses. It's really focused on the web. It's very safe to, to, to use to browse. It's very secure. And, uh, and so those people then are very happy because they've got what they, what they thought they were getting. I still think if we really want Linux to challenge Windows for the general user, we have to really focus on the user experience, the, uh, the, 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 the feeling that you get when you use the system, your level of productivity, your level of efficiency, the, 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 the sense that the whole system works together and makes it, you know, life really easy, including the codex question. Well, of course, I respect Greg, and, and he's welcome to have his opinions, but I have a completely different view of Canonical's level of contributions. Um, we focus very, very much on the whole system experience. So we, we spend a tremendous amount of time integrating components that are produced by completely different free software groups. And that is a tremendous amount of work, without which the whole experience would not be as good as it can be. Greg is right in that we aren't heavy kernel developers. We have a team of, I think now, eight or nine kernel developers, and they focus very heavily on device drivers, on um, things like suspend and resume, on making, um, um, making the user experience of Linux a wonderful one so that they don't have to worry about the kernel. So I think we make a, a very strong contribution. We're a small company. We have, um, as a percentage, we have many more developers working on free software than either Novell or Red Hat as a percentage of the total number of people in the company. Well, that's human nature. We, we, um, we've, 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 we've committed to achieving a lot. We've committed to really bringing the free software desktop to, to the broader world. And, and we've done, you know, we've, we've achieved some wonderful things. You know, Ubuntu is very popular. So I think it's right that people want to hold us to a very, very high standard. I have no problem with that. I think that that's, um, that's sensible. And I'm honored that people, you know, people will expect us to, to, to do fantastic and amazing, th amazing things. But I also think that sometimes, you know, competitors will, will say things that aren't really true just to stick a needle in and to hold, to hold a good competitor back. And I'm not going to play that game. I, I don't think that's constructive. Mm. Remember, in the free software world, in a very real sense, we are our own worst enemy. Right? The things that make us strong, such as you know, the, the fact that um, uh, anybody can change any piece of the system, right? those things make us very strong. But they're also potentially a weakness. And I think we have to be very careful when we pick a fight with each other whether it's really worth picking that fight, you know? And I often think that people don't, don't realize that it's much easier to pick a fight with someone when you don't really understand what their contribution is or, you know, or what they do than it is to figure out how to collaborate with someone who's slightly different. So while I think Greg you know, and others are well-intentioned when they tear each other down, they don't realize that they're actually making it harder to solve tomorrow's problems. 
And so that's why I strongly prefer us not to get drawn into very negative debates. It's very rare for me to criticize someone else in the Linux community. I've done it on occasion, but it's very rare. And I only do it when I think there's a very, very, very serious mistake being made that, that affects all of us. We're on track to, uh, to be self-sustaining. Um, the first milestone that, we, that, that we'll hit is when we have sufficient revenue to be absolutely certain that we can continue the, you know, the, the work of the, the sort of core six monthly releases of Ubuntu without any external funding from me. The key thing is, is to have sufficient revenue to cover the cost of Ubuntu. Because then no matter what happens to me, no matter what happens to, to, to anybody at Canonical, Ubuntu has its own sort of revenue base. And I, I think we're on our way to do that.